I can't stop myself from thinking about you. It started when we first met on the first day of school. You sat in front of the band, blowing into the flute like it was a part of you. The focus in your eyes, the way your body flowed with the melody, it was more that I could take. I spent the next few years watching you, watching the way you laughed with your friends, how you looked when you stared out into the courtyard during class, wanting to be anywhere but there. Your smile, it's absolutely breathtaking. And I found myself needing every single part of you in my life, no matter what. The fear began when I realized I would no longer be able to see you after we graduated. There was no way you would be going to the same school after. And the thought of me losing you after so many years would absolutely break my heart. I started to devise a plan. Don't worry, I did a lot of research. Enough that I knew exactly what I was doing. The internet was helpful, giving me a lot of suggestions about how to move forward, how to make you completely mine. I started to study you in more detail. I followed you home every day, making sure we took the same bus and that you wouldn't be completely suspicious. I stared into your window every night until morning. Watching as you laughed and pet your cat or listened to music. Your eyes close as the melodies float within you. You're absolutely breathtaking. You know that, right? You deserve everything in this world. And I'm going to give it to you. I heard you talking to your friend once at the school in the courtyard while I was sitting right next to the two of you eating my lunch. Though I couldn't focus on it. Couldn't focus while you looked so upset. The tears streamed down your eyes. You expressed to her that the boy you liked from the tennis team the one that all the girls in the school adored. You, you finally had the courage to tell him how you felt. That was one. He broke your heart. I could feel my heart race at the thought of it. The fact that someone could say that, say no to you you to pieces like that. I almost got up to confront him, but I stayed, listening to you, wishing I could be the one to comfort you. When lunch was over, I went home, unable to think clearly anymore. The murderous intent was clear in my face. And I wouldn't want anyone noticing. The next day, I joined the tennis team. They were in awe of how well I could play. Despite me never talking to anyone and never demonstrating my athletic skills. It was difficult not going home with you that day. But I would be willing to do anything for you. I hope you know that. He was friendly. 
and asked me to hang out with him. Something I haven't done in years. It was good. I was still truly knowledgeable about how to interact with people. Or you would have seen through my act in seconds. We befriended each other for a month. Him talking about all the girls he was with. How much he enjoyed his time with them. It was absolutely sickening. I thought it would be difficult coming out with a plan to hurt him. But it was as simple as pouring some peanut oil into the cup of beer he was drinking. And leaving. Well, he was too drunk to notice. He was stressed when you found out. He cried in the hallway. Never the phantom how something like this could happen to someone you care about so much. Little do you know, this was the best for you. And you would be so much happier afterwards. You would be gone for at least a week. And would finally learn his lesson once and for all. The plan was so successful, then I decided to finally speak to you. The blushing red cheeks when you stared up at me. The tears still dripping down your chin. I wiped it out of you. And you went crimson. You're adorable, you know. I expressed my condolences. Telling you how upset I was. That our dear classmate. Someone that was very close to. Had this happened to him. We decided to go visit him together. After class. The whole interaction was a blur. All I could do was. Smile and watch. Looking at how beautiful you were. As you talked to him. I wish he was me. We. Went out for dinner together after. Do you think I could count it as our first date? You talked about how excited you were to leave the city. To escape from your parents and all the bad memories you develop here. Why would you want to leave me? After all they have done for you? Don't you know how much I care about you? It hurts so much. I had to physically compose myself. My breathing was becoming uneven and racked. And I didn't want you to see how hurt I was. This wouldn't do. Not at all. The next day, I took the day off school and decided to come up with a concrete plan. I, I rented a locker a few miles away with my savings from doing the odd jobs here and there. And they handed the keys to me without a second thought. I invited you to my house after. And you agreed immediately. I'm glad. I'm glad you can trust me this much. I trust you too. The chloroform was a bit harder to find. But I acquired it through a black market online. You can get anything as long as you have the money. And means to acquire it. You were laughing and staring at the show we were watching together. When I put my arms around you. And the wet rag on your face. You fainted in a few seconds. Just as I planned. I hoped the decoration of the locker was fitting for you. And when you woke up. Tied to the chair. Your pupils dilated fully. I knew you looked perfect sitting there. It would be fitting for you to be there forever, my perfect girl. You screamed at me. You trashed and you begged. I hated seeing you so upset like that. Especially when it was directed at me. I left and let you calm down. It was upsetting for me to see how... So distressed you are. But I know what's best for you. 
even if you don't know it yourself. I know how to take care of you, to make you the happiest girl in the world. I, I'd hurt and I'd kill anyone for you. I hope you know that. And, and there's too many bad guys out there afraid to be okay, to leave you alone in this world. If you ever got hurt out there, I wouldn't be able to take it. It would completely destroy me. It would be better for both of us if you stay locked inside where no one could touch you. I would know where you were at all times and that made me feel so much better. I, I don't ever want to see you cry again. You were so sad at first and then the sadness turned into anger. You and a man scared me, but your fiery personality was why I fell in love with you in the first place. I tried to spend time with you. I read stories to you and told you about all the times that I watched you at school, expressing how pretty you were. You, you were gradually more and more attracted to me. And you said you had feelings for me too. That, that made me so happy. We would finally be able to live together forever. You, you asked me if you would be able to go out and see your friends. Maybe buy some clothes for yourself so you could get off your school uniform. I was hesitant at first, but you kept insisting and telling me how much you cared about me and how much you would come back for sure. Your love was overwhelming for me. No one had ever loved me this way before. I knew we were meant to be. Finally, after a month, I let you go to the mall, but I refused to let your friends come along. They would tell the police. We were still looking for you in an ongoing investigation. That was the worst mistake I ever made. With one blink of an eye, you were gone from me. Never to be seen again. What was everything you told me a lie? How much you loved me. I, I couldn't believe it. Couldn't let you hurt me like this. But that was the story of my first love before I met her. A woman who changed everything.